Hey, thanks for joining me. I'm Carla Alvarez with Raise to Walk, and I'm going to be doing a review today on My Trading Bible by Mark Andrew Ritchie. So this is a book on how to invest and trade in the stock market. And if that sounds interesting to you, then go be sure to watch this video. Also, I'm going to be doing a giveaway for this book. So if you want to enter the giveaway, then be sure to watch to the end. I'll be giving instructions on how to enter it. So this book is about, like I said, it's about how to invest and get into the stock market and trade. It's not necessarily for quick growth, but it's for long-term investment. Now I know a lot of people, one of the really popular books in personal finance is Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kawasaki. So Rich Dad Poor Dad goes over mindsets and attitudes towards money. Um, he does give a few broad strategies, but this this is specifically for investing in the stock market, and he gives a little bit different perspective on probably any other book that you might read on this topic. The way, the way it is similar to Rich Dad Poor Dad is it really talks about mindsets and attitudes when you are in when you are trading. So a little bit about Mark Ritchie. He He's a trader, that's how he made his living. He actually published a book about 25, 30 years ago uh, called God in the Pits. This is his the story of his life, um, you know, as he was growing up and also as a commodities trader. And But he doesn't give specific strategies in this book, and that is what this book does. Now the subtitle of this book is Lose Your Shirt, Save Your Life, Carry On Trading. And some people think that that's a little bit flippant. Um, it also doesn't sound really hypey either because it's basically saying, you know, how to lose and what you want to do is how to win. But what the point of this is, is he's saying that everyone, when they're in the stock market, is going to lose at one time or the other. Your su success depends on how you manage that loss and how you uh, respond long term overall. So he goes a little bit further in this in his motivation for writing the book and this is in the introduction and he says um, the money I want to save you is not the price of the book that's pocket change but thank you very much no I'm referring to your life savings that's what's in jeopardy and the reason is he's talking about how people who are inexperienced in the stock market get into it and they really sometimes they can get really in over their head and again, a little bit later, he said, that brings me to the motivation for this book after all these years. He said, my motivation is to give the outside trader an honest opportunity. You see, the computer age has brought the pit closer and closer to the point where one can trade from off the floor and succeed. But the fact that the electronic pit has brought the exchanges to the public does nothing to eradicate the misunderstandings about the, the financial exchanges how they work and how they contribute to the economy. In the old days this problem was easy. We simply told everyone to stay away and those who didn't listen paid the price. But now with the markets more accessible the situation is much more dangerous. There is a legitimate place for trading from off the floor so I can no, least so no longer simply tell you to stay away. Now you can invest, trade, even day trade. Indeed there is an entire industry out there inviting you to do just that they make it look easy, and it is. I mean, the trading is easy. Buying low and selling high is another story. There are important fundamentals behind this appearance, and he goes over this more in chapter two. So that's the motivation for it. He actually breaks this down uh, into the types of readers. So he has four distinct classes of readers and that would be reading his book. Um, the first is professional traders, five years in the black and a thousand trades, and he just tells them, go ahead, if you've done that much, then go ahead and skip to chapter four. Um, Semi-professional traders, one year in the black and a hundred trades, and he says skim and then go to chapter four. And beginners and wannabes, and this, if you are just beginning, then you want to read through the entire book. And then the fourth one is for you Christians. The fourth class actually turns out to be a subset of any one of the th previous three Christians. So this is part of what makes this book unique from pro anything else that you're going to read out there. And he 
he includes a section in the back of each chapter specifically for Christians and he identifies it. So I know sometimes people will read a book and it's written by a Christian and they'll say, well, it's religious because it mentions things. Well, he's up pretty upfront about it, you know, but he does section it off. And if you're not interested in the Christian perspective on things on that particular area, then just you can skip over it and go to the next one. So part of the reason he does this is that, you know, Christians can be have a lot of hangups about money. And again, he goes into a little bit more detail on this. This is also in the introduction. And he says, you may, and you may as well recall that the most famous Jew of all time taught us that we should be as be crafty as snakes and harmless as doves. Most of my Christian friends consume their spiritual capital trying to emulate the dove. Countless sermons have been delivered on the eternal reward that awaits the one who can humbly exemplify that bird while a vacuum is left for the theology of the snake. It is my intention to fill that vacuum. So while I am borrowing a theme from Jesus, I might as well mention early that it is my state of spiritual surety that got me in, into this book in the first place. About my first book, the Kirkus Reviews wrote that Richie has the calm confidence of a Christian with four aces, which I'm pretty sure is a quote from Mark Twain. So the way I first came discovered Mark Ritchie is I read his book, Spirit of the Rainforest, which is a completely different topic. I mean, he has a number of different books, and they're all in different genres. And I wrote a review on Amazon, and he contacted me and said, hey, thank you so much for the review. Would you like a copy of my next book, which was this? So we're friends on Facebook now. We've talked about a few things, you know, over the, since then. And the, the beginning of the year, he contacted me and said, hey, he wanted to get his book, books on Kindle. And so I created a Kindle version of his Spirit of the Rainforest. And also the my trading Bible actually just launched on Kindle about a, just a few weeks ago. And as I was researching, um, who this, you know, researching the the category and what other books were out there, I came across this book by, it's called Momentum Masters by Mark Miner, Minerini. I'm probably not even saying that right. And so this book interviews different traders, different successful traders, and he mentions in the blurb, he mentions uh, Mark Ritchie II, who is the son of the legendary Mark Ritchie. So I was like, what? I had, I mean, I at this point I had been, we had been, um, you know, I had met him like several years ago. You know, we kind of correspond on Facebook a little bit. He's not, you know, he doesn't try to puff himself off for a little bit. I knew him mainly from his work, you know, there with uh, Spirit of the Rainforest and, you know, his mission trips and things like that. I had no idea that he was such a big deal in the trading world. And so his son is like this trading genius and he is actually a pretty big deal. He had been featured in Forbes as somebody who had uh, made money with small trades consistently over time. Um, he was featured in a book called Market Wizards by Jack Schwager, I think is the last name. And he goes around and speaks at conferences. So conferences to other traders. So this is somebody who people in the industry respect and ha who has been referred to as legendary. So he's legendary. So if you've wished for somebody like that was a friend or, you know, that could kind of give you a heads up and help you along and that was really knew what they were doing then get this book and it's kind of like having an uncle kind of give help you along with the ropes um the final thing about mark ritchie which i i just think is just kind of a funny story but i've mentioned in other videos that i graduated from houston baptist university's apologetics program and that while i was in the program i took a class each semester from william lane craig so he would come each semester and teach on a special topic and it would be every day for one week. 
And one of the fun things about th that particular program, and, and especially when Dr. Craig came, was that we, during the week, we would go out to dinner with the people in the class, and Dr. Craig and his wife, and sometimes some other people. And it, so it's just, it's just a fun opportunity to get to know and have fellowship with people that, you know, are some of these really big names, you know, in, in the philosophical and apologetic world. And so, so that first class that I took with Dr. Craig, we went out to dinner and I met his wife, Miss Jan, and we just had a conversation. I says, oh, so what do you do? And she used to be a school teacher actually, but she, now that they travel so much and, um, and Dr. Craig is lecturing all over the world, she trades in the stock market. So she like handles business and Dr. Craig talks about, you know, problem of evil and Kalam uh, cosmological argument. So then we had had a conversation in the class about something and I can't even remember what it was, but I had a book that I thought that Dr. Craig would be interested in. And so I thought, well, I'm gonna give him the book. And then I remembered this book, my trading Bible, and I thought, you know what, I bet Miss Jan would like that. So, so my, normally when, this is a new copy that I bought, but um, normally when I, I write, read books, I write all over in them. And so I was gonna give her my copy, and I don't even know that, that this book was actually released on Amazon yet at the time when I had taken this class with them. But I was flipping back through the book because I wanted to make sure that you know, if I had written something in the margin that I wanted to keep, um, that I could transfer it down. So as I'm flipping through, I get to, the, to get to the back and I see William Lake Craig in the book. And I guess I hadn't read this far in the back. So, you know, he goes through his whole, you know, trading strategy and at the very end he talks about not only, um, it, he talks about his Christian faith as it influences his his business and in his profession and so in it he says well if you want information on any more of these topics there's he recommends two authorities and one of them is Lee Strobel and the second is William Lake Craig so I the next the next day I went in and I gave Dr. Craig the book and then I asked him if he had seen this because I didn't know if like he and Mark Ritchie were friends I didn't I didn't know what it was and he said uh and he said, well, no. So I read this to the class and everybody laughed, but I'm gonna read this. And this is Mark Ritchie talking about William Lane Craig. Okay. So while struggling my way through these problems, studying philosophy of religion, there was a guy who sat next to me in class. I would never expect Bill to remember me. He was too focused on the cosmological argument. We both went on after grad school. I became a lowly clerk at the CBT, and he went on to all those European institutions where one must philosophize in some other language. Then you earn letters after your name that require foreign accents to pronounce with propriety. You notice I'm trusting he hasn't lost his sense of humor in all those libraries. Today, William Lane Craig has written enough to answer any additional questions you will surely have after this brief summary. And I would be remiss not to mention the mentor of both Bill and myself, the name Norman L. Geisler, will keep popping up on your Google searches. Anything you read by him will prove helpful for sure. The only problem is that anyone reading my material will be intimidated by an author who wrote 80 books. He's still alive, so that number will be obsolete by the time you read this. So, Mark Ritchie went, was in a philosophy religion class back in the 70s with William Lake Craig. He was mentored by Norman Geisler, who was a major fi figure in the field of apologetics. He just passed away a few weeks ago. And uh, he also, now this isn't, I can't remember if it was in this book or in his book, God in the Pits. Uh, so he talks about a situation before he was married where he had to go rescue his wife from this sort of like culty fund fundamentalist group. And uh, he doesn't he doesn't name the person in the book, but if you know the if you know who the players are, you can figure it out. I actually, I mean, I knew who it was as soon as he, as soon as I read it and I actually asked him about it and I was like, oh, you know who that is? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I know. So it's almost like he's an evangelical Kevin Bacon. He has all these different connections to all these different fields. And remember, he is in the field of trading. He is the legendary Mark Ritchie. 
So, so I think this is a great book for you, if, for someone if you're interested in getting into trading. It's available on Amazon. Um, it's $14.99 on Amazon. Also, it's available on Kindle now for $9.99. And it is also in Kindle Unlimited. So if you do have Kindle Unlimited, you can read it as part of that program. Uh, if he does speak in different places, he and his son just went to and spoke at a trading conference in Singapore a few weeks ago. Um, I think he's taught, he's spoken at different, you know, different groups. And if you're interested in having him speak, he has a website, markritchie.me. I think I'll link in the descriptions. He's very accessible. So anyway, I think this is a great book. He's a really a great person, just great human being. Um, and now for the giveaway. So I'm going to give away a copy of this book. What you have to do is uh, subscribe and share this and then comment in the comments. Now YouTube has a bunch of rules uh, for any giveaways on, on their platform and so I'm going to link to those down in the comments. Basically, you know, I'm not going to use any of your information except for the winner. I'm just going to need to have your address so I can send you the email. Uh, this is going to be going on until September 1st, 2019. Um, it, I am just going to do it for uh, the U.S. just because, and I didn't know this until I was looking up contests on give, on YouTube, but there's a whole bunch of different laws and rules, and so basically I just don't want to get in trouble on YouTube for a giveaway. So it's just going to be for the U.S. You have to be over 13, um, and just comment below, and then on the first, for uh, the people who comment, I'm just going to do a random draw and then you know, whoever the winner is, I'll just con send a message through YouTube and contact you so I can send you this book. I hope you've enjoyed this review and I'm really interested to see if you've read this book. If you have experience in trading um, or you've thought about it, just let me know what your thoughts are or if there's any other books that you've read on this topic. So anyway, thanks for watching this review and I'll talk to you soon.